Hi, today we are going to talk about the pressure gradient force. The pressure gradient force is one of the most important forces in the atmosphere that governs many uh, phenomena that we observe in everyday life. This force, in fact, is responsible for uh, airplanes flying in the air. It is responsible for the wind turbine blades rotating. It is also responsible for the warm air that comes out of the oven, hot oven, when you open it. Uh, and, in fact, it is also responsible for you being able to breathe and uh, listen to this video. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand how the breathing of uh, a human being works thanks to the pressure gradient force and the subject of wind turbine blades rotating due to the pressure gradient force will be uh, in another video uh, in our wind energy series. So in uh, very simple words, qualitatively, the pressure gradient force arises due to the differences in pressure between two points in the atmosphere. The higher the pressure difference, the stronger the force. And the pressure difference usually arises due to the differences in temperature and so on. But for this video, we will just say there is a pressure difference for some reason, and uh, that causes the pressure gradient force. And uh, due to the pressure gradient force, air uh, tends to move from the region of high pressure towards the region of low pressure. So this is pretty much all that we can say qualitatively about the pressure gradient force. So now let's go and try to derive the mathematical form of this extremely important force in our everyday life. To do so, I will consider a cube of air, like this one, for example, that has sides delta x, delta y, delta z. So this is three-dimensional object, clearly. I will say this is my x-axis and this is the direction of the positive x. Firstly, the volume of this cube is clearly delta x times delta y times delta z. Therefore, the mass of air inside of this box is the uh, density of the air times the volume, and volume is delta x, delta y, delta z. Okay, now let's uh, consider that in the x direction, there is a pressure P on this side of the box. And there is some other pressure P plus delta P on the other side of the box. We know also that pressure is uh, force per area. Okay, now when we know all that, Let's write down the second Newton's law in the x direction. The second Newton's law in the x direction says that mass times acceleration in the x direction is the sum of all forces in the x direction. Well, now we just need to plug in everything in uh, this equation. And we will get that mass is this density times volume, which is dx, dy, dz, times acceleration in the x direction, is the sum of all forces. Well, I have force here due to pressure, and the force is uh, pressure times area. So pressure times area. What is the area of this side? Well, clearly it is delta y, delta z. And then I have force in the opposite direction, in the negative direction of x-axis. So minus, and this force is P plus delta P. And again, area of this side, and the area of this side is the same, delta Y, delta Z. 
Now we can cancel delta y, delta z, delta y, delta z, and delta y, delta z here. And in fact, we can also cancel this p plus p and minus p. And then we end up with a rho, which is density delta x, a x is equal minus delta p. Or I can rewrite this as a x equals minus, I will move rho to the other side, 1 over rho uh, delta p over delta x. And this is the acceleration due to the pressure gradient force or pressure gradient force per unit mass. Now, I would like you to understand that when we are using pressure gradient force in everyday life, which are finite differences, then we always use it in uh, this form where we, we have a finite difference of pressure and some finite distance. Again, thanks to our old friend Isaac Newton, we can put this in a form of uh, uh, infinitesimally small distances. And I always have a problem uh, saying that word. In other ways, I can say AX is 1 over rho limit when delta X goes to 0. Uh, delta P over delta X. And then uh, I hope you know enough calculus to realize this is part there is minus here. This is partial derivative minus 1 over rho delta p over delta x. And this is the pressure gradient force in a, in a, in a mathematical way expressed in infinitesimally small differences. Clearly, I can do the same derivation for the other two directions, and then I would get dy is minus 1 over rho delta p over delta y, and a in the z direction or acceleration in the z direction minus 1 over rho delta p over delta z. Another way we sometimes put this is we say that acceleration due to pressure gradient force in a vector form is minus 1 over rho nabla uh, p where nabla is a differential operator delta delta x i plus delta delta y j and plus delta delta z k where i j and k are the unit vectors in the x y and z direction so if this was my y direction is if this was my x direction and z coordinate or direction then these are the unit vectors i, j, k, respectively, in these two directions. So, now you understand the mathematical form of the pressure gradient force. Now let's use this, to, uh, this uh, derivation and these equations to ex examine some of the uh, phenomena in the real atmosphere. In the real atmosphere, we use this expression, for example, to analyze uh, uh, synoptic uh, pressure charts uh, or synoptic pressure maps, where we can indeed estimate the pressure difference and the pressure gradient, rather, between different uh, points uh, above Earth's surface. So here, uh, I printed uh, a... Uh, surface uh, pressure map uh, from a Met Office. So I, let me just adjust. So this is the a surface pressure map from Met Office for uh, today. And uh, what we see here is a bunch of lines. The lines that are important for us are, are these full lines that I hope you can see that show surface pressure in millibars. So we have 16 millibars. Oh, 
we have six uh, hundred uh, one thousand sixteen one thousand twenty one thousand twenty four millibars so let's use now the uh, this pressure map to estimate the pressure gradient in this form here right now to do that to, to do that, I would need uh, some uh, ruler uh, that, uh, that will help me to measure the distances. And it just happened that I have a meter tape here. Who would expect that? So, let's say we want to estimate the pressure gradient uh, between, let us say, between this point here and this point over here. Okay. Now, if I use this meter, uh, this ruler, the distance is about four centimeters. But I can also see that the distance is about four centimeters between this latitude and this latitude and, uh, and this latitude. And I know that distance between latitudes is about 111 kilometers. So I can say, if I uh, take this distance, that in this particular case, delta P over this distance delta N, let's call it, is equal, well, delta P, this is 1024, this is 1020, so it is four millibars divided by uh, 111 kilometers approximately because I know this distance is the same as distance between latitude circles and this this and the uh, distance between latitude circles is, uh, is around 111 kilometers so if I do this I should get uh, if I divide this I should get 0 0.036 millibars per kilometer. Now let's do the same exercise but for example for these two points. I'll take this point here and this point here. The distance here is as you can see around one centimeter. Here was four centimeters, here is one centimeter so that is four times smaller. So here delta P over delta N is the same four millibars but over the distance of uh, 111 divided by 4 is around 28 kilometers so I get it is 0 0.143 millibars per kilometer what we can conclude that the pressure gradient here is about four times the pressure gradient here. And you can see that by the distance between isobars. Isobars are the lines of constant pressure. You can see that isobars are much closer here compared to here. So what we concluded from this analysis is uh, if we have a weather chart and the isobars are very close to each other, the pressure gradient is very strong and then the pressure gradient force consequently is also very very strong. Lastly, uh, I promised you that uh, we will also describe the process of breathing using the pressure gradient force. And this is really very very simple. Uh, you probably know from high school, if you don't know, you will learn in one of my future videos that uh, if you have a container of gas and uh, you keep everything constant but you increase the volume of the container then pressure consequently reduces and as I said in uh, the previous video on the continuum uh, and I will put the link uh, in the description so you can check out that video our lungs are very good uh, air container so when I breathe I expand my lungs therefore the pressure decreases and there is the pressure difference in between inside of my chest or in my lungs and the atmosphere 
if there is a pressure difference, there is the pressure gradient. If there is the pressure gradient, there is the pressure gradient force that is pushing air through my nose and uh, the rest of the respiratory system to my lungs. Opposite happens when I contract uh, lungs or my chest, the air goes out. So really, the breathing has nothing to do with nose except that uh, air goes through the nose. If you would theoretically put the hole on your shoulder and somehow connect it to your lungs, as you expand your lungs, the pressure gradient force will, will force the air through your shoulder to, to your lungs. And uh, probably you remember, maybe you saw people that had accidents and cannot breathe through mouth or nose. They sometimes have hole on the throat where can uh, where they can use to breathe. Uh, of course, if you have very big nose, it is very good because then more air can go through the nose. It's more efficient. And we also saw in the previous video that big noses are very good for the assumption of continuum. So conclusion is big noses are good noses. That's really all that uh, I have to say about the pressure gradient force. I hope that today you uh, will look at these everyday phenomena in completely different way because many, many of them are due to this amazing pressure gradient force. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.